everybody. It's Wednesday. It's hot. Is it hot where you are? Because like we've had the air conditioning on and had to shut up the house for a couple days. I open it in the morning and in the evening so that I can get that beautiful breeze. But it's getting in the upper 80s already. And it's like what? It's just barely mid-May. So, but today, we are going to be making some really glorious food with Chef Val in our plant-based chat. So welcome her. And Chef Val, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and what you're going to do today? Yeah, well, thank you, Kathy, for having me on uh, your live show again. I'm very happy to be here. And let me introduce myself. I am Chef Valerie Wilson. My business name is MacroVal, and that's my website. I have been teaching healthy whole foods cooking classes since 1997. That is 26 years. Wow. I am the author, I'm the author of six cookbooks. I absolutely love cooking. I literally have been cooking since I was nine years old with my mom. My first job was at the age of 17 at a delicatessen where we made pizza and bread and, and sandwiches. And by 18, I was the manager and I was running the place. So I've been in the food industry since I was 17 years old. I absolutely love food, <laughs> and, uh, but I love healthy whole food, uh, organic food. And so I teach cooking classes on a regular basis. I offer lifestyle counseling where I can help people overcome diseases in the body using food. And today I wanted to come on Kathy's show and share with you a recipe that has ingredients in it that are going to nurture and support your liver. So it's a quinoa, asparagus, I forget the name of it, fennel salad dish. Uh, with the, oh my God, the dressing is to die for. It's a mustard fennel dressing. Ooh. And then I'm also going to teach, yeah, yeah, mustard fennel. I'm also going to teach a love your liver tea that I created using ingredients that are all for the liver. And you know what? After I created it, I tasted it and went, this is really delicious. So food is medicine, but that doesn't mean that it has to taste bad because, you know, sometimes medicine doesn't taste good, but if you use sweet foods to make, you know, the, the dishes like I made the tea, it actually is very flavorful. So you can heal your body with food and it can be delicious food all at the same time. I love that. And so I love that you're doing a salad because like now is the time. I was not expecting to want all the cold foods. Like, and if you guys, um, if you're on YouTube watching, you'll see I just put the Ninja Creamy ebook on sale because like it's ninja creamy all day in this house right now. <laughs> so, and one thing I'm gonna do before the month's over is I'm gonna make hummus in the ninja creamy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so we're gonna test that and see if it makes it smoother than the other. But Chef Val offered, reached out to me and said, I know you're having some liver issues. Let me make some food that's good for your liver, which is really nice. And I really appreciate it very, very much. Um, so I guess I'm going to just let you cook or, well, actually, before we cook, if that's okay, when you thought about foods that are good for your liver and nurturing and healing, what were some, I mean, obviously we know some, you gave us a sneak peek, right? <laughs> but what are maybe like a small list of foods and that you would be eating and adding to your diet? Yeah, I would love to do that. Um, I hate this side note here, but Kathy, I'm still small on the screen. And when I start cooking and I want to see like what I'm showing and everything, it helps if, if I'm bigger. I don't yes, know I have a different, I have two scenes set up. One is we're us side by side and one is you big and you take up the whole thing. So, a so when I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, For, just, just wanted to check. Yeah, so my background is also in macrobiotic cooking. And for those who don't know, it's, it's eating as close to nature as possible. It's whole food, uh, plant-based foods. I'm also vegan, so no animal products. But this means that I've also studied the energy of the food. This falls in line with Oriental Chinese medicine, where they talk about the energy of the food. 
So there are certain foods that energetically are going to feed and nurture the liver. And this also falls under the five transformations of energy, which maybe you've heard of, maybe you haven't, but there's five different seasons and we cook according to the seasons. This again comes from Oriental medicine. If you've ever done Tai Chi or uh, martial arts, you probably studied the five transformations of energy. So for the liver, we're going to focus on the spring season. That's what we're in right now. Oh, and that's coincidence. That's awesome. So it's yeah. the liver season for everybody, not just me. Exactly. It is the season for spring where we feed and nurture your liver, your gallbladder, and your nervous system. And so the signature flavor for springtime is sour. So anytime you eat something that's sour, you're feeding and nurturing your liver. And of course, most people think of lemon right away, right? Because that's the signature sour thing. Where I think most people have heard if you take, you know, water and you mix a little bit of lemon juice and you drink it, it's a natural cleanse for your liver because there's that sour flavor. Now, we also have limes and lime juice. We have one of my favorites, which is going to be in the recipe, sauerkraut. I love sauerkraut. I love sauerkraut. Well, there you go. And um, anything that's been fermented, like your vinegars, will have a sour flavor. Uh, and so somebody in the cooking class I taught yesterday mentioned sorrel. And I've never had sorrel, but it has a naturally sour taste to it. And he mentioned that, and I thought that was excellent that he brought that up. Again, it's like, I've heard that you're supposed to get that wild or something, and I've never had the opportunity, but that's naturally sour. Some In some farmer's markets, um, they will have things like dandelion greens, and I've heard it called sorrel, but I mispronounce everything, so maybe I I'm, do. So I may be mispronounced. So forgive me, what, whichever thing is right, the yummy bitter green, um, and there's some other bitter greens that I noticed coming up. So like we have several farmers markets around me, so it's going to be more in like the Durham or the um, Hillsborough, Carborough farmers market, not in the big giant Raleigh farmers market, which is a little more commercial, if that makes sense. You can get garlic scapes there though. So maybe this year they'll do sorrel, who knows? I, you can buy, actually can buy what is it? It's blood, blood dock. It's blood something. That's the, the, it's a green that has red. It's not Swiss chard blood. It's blood something. It's supposed to be a blood cleanser too. You can get plants for that and probably sorrel at the Raleigh farmer's market right now. That's awesome. And you mentioned uh, blood purifying. So the liver one of its main functions is to purify the blood and a large supply of your blood is stored in your liver at any particular time so all of the foods that naturally cleanse the blood would be really good for your liver and asparagus is one of those foods that helps cleanse the blood and i'm going to feature asparagus and also fennel I mean, I knew fennel was good for you, but then I did some even more research to find out about how it's going to help your liver more. And so fennel actually has the um, action, the food actually has the action to protect your liver. And as you were mentioned, Kathy, pronouncing things, I tend to slaughter when I pronounce things, but it's called hepatoprotective. And H-E-P-A-T-I-C, that means relating to the liver. Hepatic, heptic, heptic. So fennel has the action to be heptic prevented, if that makes sense. And um, so your liver performs a vital role in that it helps to detoxify the body. Um, it helps with your metabolism. And it also helps with the secretion and storage of, you know, healthy fluids. So again, detoxification, that's very, very important. And dandelion greens, as you mentioned, which is going to be in the tea I'm going to make, excellent to detoxify your body of toxins, again. 
Um, so go ahead. I have to know early. So are we using dry dandelion or are we using fresh dandelion? Or can you use either one in the recipe? I'm cheating and jumping ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. You could use either one. I'm going to use fresh. Okay, great. Because one thing that you guys may notice, if you don't put anything on your yards, and actually if you saw my backyard, it's a jungle. So I think we've missed our opportunity because snakes are living out there. Like we let the azaleas are like 10 years old uncut. So anything from our yard is safe to eat, <laughs> if that makes sense. So if you have someone who comes and does your yard or puts fertilizer on it or something like that, you don't want to pick your dandelions and you don't want to just go into somebody else's yard. I might if I know they don't spray their yard. <laughs> I'm, I'm known for, um, for, for doing things like that, but you can, like, we always get a couple of giant dandelions in the backyard, and I try to harvest those whenever I can. Um, and I can, I've been able to find dried dandelion, but it was a little bit harder, but I think you can get it on Amazon. Yeah, and I do not spray my lawn. I haven't in over 15 years. So I go out and I pick my dandelions. I snip off the green part and save them. And just a couple of weeks ago, I went out and snipped off the yellow flowers on all the dandelions on my grass. And I had a lot. And I boiled them and made tea. And it was very flavorful. It was very delicious. I also have picked wild violets. And the wild violet leaves, you can pick those and dry those. Another excellent liver tonic is violet leaves. You make a tea out of it and you drink Ooh, that. And that's, that's native to the area that I'm in, actually. So like when I'm taking my little walk or we're walking through the Eno State Park, we see a lot of those. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the leaves are great. Um, another thing that you want to look for foods to help with your liver are foods that are high in antioxidants. Okay. Uh, because antioxidants fight free radicals and free radicals that you find most of the time you find free radicals in your food, they can enhance your liver damage. So all the foods with antioxidants that fight free radicals, such as mushrooms, which I'm going to be using and shiitake mushrooms is one of the best. I'm going to be using that in the recipe too. So anything that fights off, again, free radicals, high in antioxidants, um, is fantastic, you know, for you. And removing the toxins from your body. Mm, yeah. So I got some notes. And then as I'm teaching, I'll tell you a little bit about some of the things. That sounds great. And I'm going to go ahead and let you start cooking your first thing. You guys, if you have questions, put them in the comments. I'll make sure to post them and read them out loud so Val can answer you. Um, there are some questions about Ninja Creamy and stuff like that. We're probably not going to answer it today, but at the end, I'll tell you what I'm going to do alive. Also, Val, before the end, was there a special reason that you wanted to come on this live maybe? And I'm going to let you talk about that and then go into cooking. Yeah, so thank you, Kathy. I have a special event coming up this Saturday, May 20th. It is called the Scrumptious Plant-Based Burgers and More Cooking Class. I am teaching with two other whole foods plant-based experts, Sid Nodder, who is a nutritional counselor, and Vicki Brett Gock, who is also a counselor and she's a chef. So these other two ladies I met in the bundle that we did at the beginning of the year. That's how I met Kathy. So I have teamed up with these two other very talented ladies. There's three of us. And we're going to be teaching this two and a half hour cooking class featuring veggie burgers. Now, Sid is going to make a pizza burger. And Vicki is going to make a Fiesta Fajita burger. And I am going to make a veggie burger called a traditional pasty burger inspired by the flavors of a pasty. Pasties are a self-contained food that originated in Cornwall, England. And my mom's side of the family comes from Cornwall, England. And also in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, my absolutely favorite place in the world, they have lots of pasties for sale up there. So this recipe is near and dear to my heart. 
And I've had two friends and my family who have tasted this pasty burger and they were all very impressed. And they said it really reminded them of a pasty. So this is a fun cooking class. Go ahead. Yeah, we're going to say something, Kathy? I was just going to say, it sounds delicious. And my audience is pretty familiar with Vicki. She's been on a few times too, because we've just been friends for a long time. I think she actually tested on some of my early books too. She's awesome. Um, but yeah, I think this burger class sounds great. And it's super timely because we are all going to be Oh, Kathy, I lost your sound. I can't hear you. For 4th, we're going to be making, it's very timely. We're going to be making um, burgers for 4th of July, Memorial Day, all of those times. And plus, when you get invited over to somebody's cookout, these will be really great to bring. I am going to answer one question and then we can, and you, they can go to macroval.com to sign up for your class. And Vicki and um, that are awesome too. So I think it, I recommend it very much. Um, the question is from Justine. Justine wanted to know how I knew I was having liver issues. Are there symptoms I should be aware of? If this is too personal, to share a full answer. No. Very, very few things are too personal for me to share, A. Um, B, I am now a middle-aged person, so I get my blood work done twice a year at least, and I have um, Graves' disease, so we're always checking my blood for my thyroid. So what they noticed is there were two um, numbers that were climbing on my liver. Then the next step was to get an ultrasound and then a biopsy. So the biopsy was years past any of this other stuff. Okay, so don't be frightened. Um, if you are, I would say if you're even between 30 and 40 and you haven't been having regular blood work, it's worth getting it checked out if you haven't been feeling well. It can tell you things like, is your thyroid too high or low? Do you need iron? Is your B12, have you not been taking your B12 supplement like I wasn't? Um, vitamin D, things like that. So I'm pro blood work because it gives you information to make good, intelligent choices. Um, so that's how I knew. I didn't really have any like symptom symptoms like, you know, oh, my shoulder's aching or, you know, like your gallbladder, there's a gallbladder pain spot. It's nothing like that. So let's let Val go make some yummy food for us. All right, yeah, let's get cooking. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cook the quinoa. And I'm actually gonna cook the quinoa in water with shiitake mushrooms. So here's our first, um recipe here so i wanted to let everybody see this this is organic frozen shiitake mushrooms nice. they're like your best friend yeah and you and you can also if you can't find those where you guys are go to the asian market get the cheaper shiitake mushrooms slice them and freeze them yeah yeah you can do that or you could use dry but these are kind of my new favorite thing and so we need a half a cup of the frozen shiitakes. Shiitakes have this incredible flavor. I think they're one of the most flavorful mushrooms and they're known for cleansing the body of toxins. They have antioxidant properties that I talked about and they can also help break down fat, cysts, or tumors that are in the body and just, just you know, cleanse them out of the body. So cleansing property. I'm a little thick on a half a cup, so put a couple back. All right, I want to show you that. Now let's move over to the stove so we can cook. Mm -hmm. Kathy, if um, side note, I'm still the little small screen. You're not. You're not in the world, though. Oh, okay. okay. It just it, it just makes it easier for me to see what I don't on my know team. what you see. That has to do with eCam, and I don't know that I can really change that. I'm just I change between two things. Usually, when I'm talking to you, it's just you and me on the screen, or it's just you. So now it's just you. Okay. Very good. All right. Back here, I have four cups of water. This is for the love your liver tea. So I'm bringing the water to a boil. Here, I'm going to take a pot and I'm going to put a half a cup of the whole grain quinoa in the pot. 
and I'm going to double the amount of water. So that's a half a cup of quinoa. That's one cup of water. I'm going to put that on the burner and I'm going to turn it to high. That's the wrong one. <laughs> and did I you want... buy, Val, did you buy pre-washed quinoa or did you already wash it? Actually, I don't wash my quinoa. Huh? I do wash. I really? Do wash my, I do wash my brown rice. I do not wash my quinoa. Quinoa is a very small whole grain and you need a very fine strainer to wash it. I, I've never washed my quinoa in 26 years. You don't find that the bitter coating with the saffons bother you? Yes. No. And in fact, um, I taught a cooking class yesterday where I, I made quinoa also. And uh, I said that some people find the quinoa to be bitter to the taste. I really don't find it to be that bitter myself personally. So I, I do not rinse it. Some people soak it, which I think is you really don't need to soak it because it only takes 15 minutes to cook. But again, if some people think that it tastes bitter, I guess they could do that. But after I create my dish, the quinoa is going to be served with vegetables, sauerkraut, and a beautiful dressing. The bitterness of the quinoa, I don't even think is going to be noticeable with all the other flavors that I'm putting with it. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So we're bringing it to a boil and I'm going to add that half a cup of shiitakes with it. All right, am I going crazy? Here's the helmet. How come shiitakes? So I'm going to cook the shiitakes with the quinoa. The quinoa is going to absorb that beautiful flavor and make it really flavorful. Now, the first step of cooking whole grains is you bring them to a boil. As the water boils, it starts to open up the whole grain and makes the whole grain more digestible. So that's the first step. Now, once it comes to a boil, you just let it boil for a minute and then you put it on the lowest possible temperature there is and you let it simmer for 15 minutes. Now I was, on, when I, last time I was on Kathy's show, I showed this, this is a flame tamer and I told you about it. This is a metal here, wood here. I use this for all of my whole grains. It just sits in between the heat and the pot. So my whole grains cook evenly. This way my brown rice, my millet, my quinoa turns out perfect every single time it's called a flame tamer or a flame diffuser and i the majority of the food that i eat is whole grains i eat whole grains three meals a day seven days a week for over 30 years so i cook a lot of whole grains all right we're at a boil so i'm going to reduce this to a low temperature and then i need to put the lid on it and i'm going to put it on the flame tamer and i'm going to set the timer for 15 minutes that's how long the quinoa takes to cook. Quinoa is a light and fluffy whole grain. And so it works really good, like in this application where we're gonna serve it with vegetables and we're gonna serve it over lettuce, kind of like a salad application. Quinoa is high in iron, it's high in calcium. It also contains all um, eight essential amino acids, which means it's a complete protein. So it's a complex carbohydrate, it's a whole grain, but it's also a complete protein. So quinoa is one of your best whole grains that you can consume because it's got everything in it. All I right, love so quinoa. That's... And quinoa in the summer is great because you can make a big pot of it and you can even sprinkle it over salads or sandwiches and things just to add a little extra. Justine has a question. Does a flame yeah. tamer also help things not boil over? I've never used it in that application. Okay. So I have no I idea because I still haven't used it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the tea, the love your liver tea is also going to boil for 15 minutes. So I thought it would be good to have while the quinoa is cooking to do the tea. So the tea consists of one quarter cup of diced onions, diced onions. Once they're cooked become sweet. So we want to create a sweet broth for this tea so it's going to be flavorful and we're going to want to drink it. So I also have a quarter cup of diced sweet potato and that's going in there. I also have fennel to add to this, but I haven't chopped it yet because I want to show you fennel. I have two tablespoons of chopped dandelion greens and Kathy was asking about the dandelion greens. I went to the supermarket and I was able to buy organic 
Those are point. beautiful. Yeah. But I'm going the wrong way in the camera. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's great. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what they look, they look like. like. So we got two tablespoons. Now, when you are creating a tea like this, you have to remember that I used a quarter cup of onions, a quarter cup of sweet potato, but only two tablespoons of the greens because greens are bitter. And like I said, we want this tea to be flavorful because we're going to want to drink it. We're not going to want to drink a bitter tea. We're going to want to drink a sweet tea. And then I have one quarter teaspoon of dried fennel seed. So the whole fennel plant, whether it's the seed, the bulb, or the fronds, have all that antioxidant action that we were talking about early. Fennel is fantastic for your liver. So we have a quarter teaspoon of that. And then we have the ultimate fresh grated turmeric. I love fresh grated turmeric, and it is so fantastic for your liver. Antioxidant. Oh, antioxidant, antiviral, anti antimicrobial, fresh grated turmeric. Now I keep fresh grated turmeric in my freezer all the time. So I always have it. This is a quarter teaspoon. Now, if you don't have fresh grated, can you use dry? Yes, you can use dry. The fresh grated is more medicinal than the dried, but you could use the dried because turmeric is just amazing. So the tea is going to have kind of this funky yellowish orange color to it, which is going to be great. All right. So I got everything in there and it's boiling, but um, I'm going to reduce it to a simmer. And then I want to go and chop up the fennel and add it because we're supposed to have a quarter cup of fennel in here too. But I wanted to show you fennel because some people maybe have not seen or used the fresh fennel. Here it is. That is a big bulb of fennel. It's one of my favorite. I absolutely adore fennel. This is where the flavor of licorice comes from, that licorice flavor. All right, so how are we going to work with this big fennel? Well, first of all, let's cut the fronds from the bulb. Okay, so this is the bulb. Hey, what does that look like? In Oriental medicine, they teach us when a food looks like a particular organ in the body, it feeds and nurtures that organ. What does that look like? <laughs> I want to say liver just because I know it's supposed to, but I'm like, I don't know. It almost looks like a heart to me. It looks exactly like a heart. So yes, it's good for the liver, but this is fantastic for your heart. Okay. Too. It does. It really does. I didn't know there All was right. going to be a quiz today, Val. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. There's always a quiz when I teach a cooking class. So my audience is very gets to answer questions. So for the quarter cup that we're going to put in the tea, you can use the fronds. You can use the stalks. You could use the bulb, any of it. So I'm going to go ahead and use this part of it and just get a quarter cup like so. And Mary Jean gonna... says fennel is awesome. I'm getting very excited for this. Oh, good. Awesome. I'm just going to put that right into the water and uh, that's going to continue to cook. So this part of it with these beautiful fronds, I'm going to use some of these fronds to like um, decorate it at the end, put these on the top as garnish. So save those, you can use those and you can always, like I'm making this fancy love your liver tea with multiple ingredients, but you could just boil this and then you would just have a fennel tea. And oh my God, the flavor of the, the tea, the fennel really shows through with this one. The flavor it comes through, it's very nice. All right, so we have the tea going, we have the quinoa going. Now there's a vegetable portion of the quinoa dish where we need one cup of the fennel ball chopped up. So as long as we're working with the fennel, let's go ahead and continue with the ball. So this is the butt end. You're not going to be able to eat the butt end. Val, we so have we another gonna... question. Um, could you also freeze those fennel fronds? 
I have never frozen them myself, but I don't see why you couldn't. The stems, I would think, would freeze really well. I wonder if I'm, the fronds, the like the little end parts remind me of dill, which yes. would be great dried. I have never tried to freeze that, though. You know what? Now that somebody's asked that, I am going to try freezing it to see how it comes out. Awesome. Usually You'll have I, to let us know. Usually I use it up before I get a chance to freeze it. But So here we have the bulb. And for this recipe, we're just going to dice about one cup of the fennel, like so. Now there is a core in the middle of the fennel. The core is very tough and hard, kind of not palatable. Again, you could save that and make tea out of it. But for eating purposes, we want the bulb of the fennel. And we want one cup. And I'm chopping it right now. You basically have one cup um, of the vegetables. I'm so glad that um, people have eaten fennel and love it. Now, sometimes I eat the fennel raw. It's crunchy like celery. And it reminds me of eating licorice because that's the flavor. Um, so you can eat licorice without all that added sugar if you want to just chomp on some fennel. All right, so we got one cup of fennel diced. All right. So the rest of the vegetables I kind of got together ahead of time, except the carrot, because I'm going to make carrot matchsticks, and I wanted to demonstrate how to do that because it's kind of cool. All right, so if you put the carrot on the cutting board, I always get rid of the ends because we don't want that. You're going to cut the carrot at an angle, like so. And you're going to let the pieces of the carrot fall on the cutting board without disrupting them. This is called carrot matchsticks. It takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of patience, but once you get the cutting technique down, I use this uh, type of cutting of the carrot quite often because it's beautiful and it makes your presentation look very pretty. So we cut the carrot, see how it's sliced? And now we just fold it down. We fan it down like this so that we can chop it. Take your knife and you just chop it like so and you get carrot matchsticks. Nice. And while you're doing that, Sue is saying, and I, I hate to disagree with you because Chef Val, you know so many things. The only thing I'm disagreeing with is I have to wash my quinoa, which is not really a disagreement as much as it's too bitter for me. And Sue is kind of saying the same thing. She always washes hers because the water turns murky for several rinses and she gets the Costco organic quinoa. Now I will say I get the Costco organic quinoa because it's pre-rinsed and I do not rinse that particular one. So I'm finding more and more, your I find pre-rinsed quinoa over regular, but Cheryl will not eat it and I, I can't eat it either. So, which is weird because I love bitters, like cocktail bitters, bitter drinks, you know, all those things. But for some reason I taste it a lot. I think it's awesome that you don't have to rinse your quinoa though, because it's a pain in the behind. So I also get the organic quinoa from Costco. And again, um, and that you, is pre-rinsed. That, that is actually pre-rinsed before it comes. So because the, the, my understanding, and, you, and so if you're getting it from there too, so quinoa has this coating on it called a saffin. I think it's S-A-P-I-O-N. And, and that's what makes, it makes it bitter so the birds don't eat all of it. And when we're rinsing it, I just take my fine mesh, all my fine mesh strainers are in the back. I take a, a much larger fine mesh strainer and I just rub it together. 
but I would rather pay extra money and have somebody else rents it for me for sure. And again, and that's totally fine. If you want to rinse your quinoa, go ahead. I mean, like I said, some people have a sensitivity to that bitter taste and they like it better once it's rinsed, you know? And so, the, yeah. yeah. It, it, Justine has another and question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, she, it's, I noticed Val pours water on her cutting board. Why? I get asked that question in every single cooking class, which is why I always take the time to talk about it unless someone asks me. Putting water on your cutting board fills in the pores in the wood of the cutting board so your cutting board doesn't absorb the color or the odor that you're chopping. So my cutting board never smells like garlic, it never smells like onions, and never turns orange from sweet potatoes. I have had these cutting boards for 20 years. They are not colored, they do not smell, so I always put water on my cutting board. I have a wet cutting surface, and that way my cutting board stays fresh and beautiful years and years and years. Awesome, awesome tip. I have never heard that before. Yeah. yeah. That's one of my most popular tips. People that have taken cooking classes, you know, maybe I haven't seen them in years. I'll run into them. They're like, hi, how are you? Da, da, da. Hey, I always remember that you said to put water on my cutting board. That was like the one thing, like I'm teaching about how to heal your liver and they remember, put water on my cutting board. <laughs> it's right, the little continue. things that count sometimes that people right. keep with them. And Mary Jean says that she loves that tip and she's gonna start using that from now on. So you're, you're changing lives, Val. Oh, Justine says, does it work for turmeric too? Cause turmeric is no. kind of the devil like I've, I've turned so many things of different varying plastics, wood. Yeah, I feel like turmeric has the corner on dying. I use that trick with turmeric and I do large quantities of turmeric and freeze it. This is my turmeric cutting board. You can see even with the water, the turmeric stains. So this is my turmeric cutting board. So there's nothing you can do with turmeric, even using water. Unfortunately, that's just turmeric. That's just the way it is. There's an exception to the rule always, right? Of course. Then... <laughs> All right, so this is the vegetable portion of the dish. Get yourself a large enough pan that will fit vegetables in it. I've got just this saute pan. Now we're gonna put the vegetables in here um, in their own little compartment. We have a half, of a purple onion. Why am I using a purple onion? Well, because purple onions have sulfur in them and they also have curcumin in them, which are antioxidants that help prevent liver damage. So the purple onion has the sulfur in it. The liver needs high doses of sulfur in order to carry out phase two detoxification. So purple onions, purple cabbage, you want that purple color. So I'm gonna put that half a purple onion in here. I'm going to put our beautiful carrot matchstick into the pan. I have one cup of asparagus. Oh my God, one of my all time favorite vegetables, asparagus. I love asparagus. I have one cup of turnip that I cut in matchstick. Now, when I created the recipe, originally I wanted to use daikon because daikon has such a great detoxification mechanism, but I couldn't find any organic daikon around me, so I got organic turnip. Turnip and turnip is still wonderful for your liver too, and both of them are similar. They're both root vegetables, so that's a substitution. You could use daikon or turnip. And then here's our one cup of fennel, putting it in here, all right. So why am I doing this pretty, all their own separate compartment, looking like pieces of pie? Have any idea? I'm assuming it's because you're gonna decorate something. That's what I would think. No, this is, um, this is like a, a gourmet way of cooking to keep all of the flavors separate. So the onions are gonna cook separate in their own little compartment. And so the idea is that my onions are gonna taste like onions. My turnip are gonna taste like turnip. My fennel's gonna taste like fennel. 
So as it's cooking, it's on its own little compartment. Then after it's done, I will mix it all together. It's a very subtle flavor difference, but the it keeps the flavors more um, I, I, identifiable. So you can actually taste the asparagus, taste the turnip. So that's the reason for this particular type of cooking method. Interesting. I'm going to, I've never I've never seen that exactly. So that's very this cool. Is, this I've been teaching this for 26 years in my cooking classes. Yeah. I don't know, like, I think it works really well, but then my students even say things like, you know, Val, your food is just a little more flavorful than other ones that I've tasted. And I said, well, it's little tips and little techniques such as this that I think make a difference in the end. Will it make a huge difference if you just throw all the vegetables in there and cook it? No. I want you to get the health benefit of the vegetables. So if you don't do this, cook, like I had someone yesterday in the class, she asked me, I'm not going to do all that because that's fancy. Can I just put all the vegetables in a pot? Absolutely. If that's the only way that you can eat vegetables, put them in the pot and eat them. You know what I mean? It's more important that you get vegetables. But like I said, this is a gourmet way of cooking the vegetables. We are going to add one third of a cup of water and one tablespoon of sauerkraut juice. We're gonna add sauerkraut later, but the one tablespoon of sauerkraut juice just makes this more flavorful. What's gonna happen is the water is gonna boil and then it's gonna steam the vegetables. So I kind of turned it um, to like a medium high cause I wanna get the water boiling. So that was the timer that went off just here a couple minutes ago. We better check our food to make sure it's not overdone. Come to the other side of the stove so I can really see the quinoa. So there's a little bit, there's a little bit of water still at the bottom of the pot of the quinoa. I'm going to let it go another minute because I want all that water to be absorbed. Now the um, love your liver tea, however, that has been cooking for 15 minutes. So now we can take, I've got a glass bowl and I got a strainer and we can strain that love your liver tea like so. And then what's left once you strain this out? I mean, you can, you can eat these vegetables if you want. Um, I usually just compost them because I'm more interested in the tea. And then we add, let's see, how much is it? Uh, one teaspoon. We add one teaspoon of lemon juice. And I happen to squeeze some beautiful organic lemon juice. This is fresh lemon juice. If you don't have fresh lemon juice, you know, you could just get some organic lemon juice from the store, but we want one teaspoon. Now I didn't add any sweetener to this. If you wanted to add a sweetener, you could, I would add a very little bit, but I would also advise that you taste this before you add a sweetener because I started with the sweet potato and the onion, which gives it a natural sweetness anyways. And there's the color. Nice. It's very, very, very flavorful. You really taste the fennel coming through and you taste the little bit of lemon juice too. You can drink it warm or cold. Oh, I love that. Oh, the fennel, yum. I'm, I may take that and do a variation and make an uh, like an ice cream or sorbet with it interesting i'm thinking of doing that because i'm like wondering because it's going to be kind of delicate so sometimes i will sweeten my ninja creamy pints with pureed pears right. and that shouldn't take too much away from it but it might add enough to kind of make it taste a little more like a dessert not that to the team needs to but the ice cream would, if that makes sense. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. You know what? I forgot. You know what? I forgot something. I'm so sorry. And I was just thinking I need to put garlic in that, um, in our vegetables. I forgot one of the signature ingredients in the Love Your Liver tea. I took dried shiitake and I ground them up and I made shiitake powder. Oh, I love mushroom powder. Mushroom powder is the best. I do too. I do too. Yeah. Well, I'm going to add it right now, even though it was supposed to get added earlier. It'll I'm be go delicious. Yeah. And Mona votes Quarter for an ice cream. <laughs> Quarter teaspoon of the shiitake powder. If you don't have shiitake, you know, you could use another, you could use another mushroom powder, but again, shiitake is just the signature mushroom for your liver. So yeah, sorry that I had forgotten that, but yeah, shiitake mushroom powder in there. And then I need four garlic cloves to add with our vegetables too. So the garlic really adds a wonderful flavor. Yeah, so speaking of ice cream, I make aquafaba ice cream. That's my favorite. In fact, I've got a couple aquafaba recipes in my dessert cookbook. And I have made aquafaba ice cream where I put turmeric in it, fresh grated turmeric. Not a lot, just a little bit. And it's such an interesting flavor and it's so delicious with turmeric in it. All right, so I'm just chopping the garlic. The first thing I'm doing is I'm taking the peel off of the garlic like so, putting it, getting rid of that. Um, Garlic is your antibiotic, natural antibiotic, antiviral, antifungal. It will also kill the free radicals in your system. So when it comes for loving your liver, you want to fight those free radicals. Okay. Another thing that the liver does not like is intensely sweet foods. So um, no sugar, which I think most of us hopefully have given up white refined sugar, right? So using alternative sweeteners that come from whole foods is a step in the right direction for your liver. Because a lot of people think, you know, fatty liver comes from fatty food, which that is one of the culprits. It does come from fatty food. But fatty liver also comes from ingesting large amounts of white refined sugar, which is bad for your liver too. I'm just going to chop the garlic up into small pieces, and we're going to add it to the vegetable portion. Go. Chop, 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 chop. We still have the mustard dressing to make too. I hope you don't mind that we're probably going to go. Oh, we got ten minutes. We're probably going to go over. Oh, on my show there is no going over unless I have somewhere to be, which I do not. If the shows oh, take okay. as long as they take, the conversations are as good as they are, and everybody gets to get their questions answered. And while you're chopping, Justine said, what about a licorice ice cream with the fennel? And that is very possible. I got a licorice tea. I think it was Apple and I were talking because Chef AJ's favorite <laughs> ice cream is licorice, so she wants me to make one. But fennel is a good idea, too, because I'll probably be able to find that soon here. <laughs> Yeah, that, that would be amazing. Ice cream with fennel in it. Let's check and see. Yeah, we still got water in there, and I just added the garlic. The idea is to cook the vegetables with a little bit of water in the bottom so they steam. And uh, so at the end, we aren't going to have vegetable soup. We're just going to have a nice um, vegetables that have been steamed and cooked. All right, let's check the quinoa because I let it go a few more minutes. Yeah, the quinoa is done. How do you check to see if quinoa is done? You just ever so slightly move it aside and make sure that all the water has been absorbed and that the quinoa is soft. The quinoa actually looks like it's broken open. That's how you know quinoa is done. With my whole grains, I take them off of the heat. Just let them sit for about five minutes because the residual heat for the next five minutes, it's gonna to continue to cook. So I usually don't touch them for about five minutes and then I move on with the other recipe and eventually add it. So we're waiting for the vegetables to cook. We're waiting for the quinoa to cook. 
We still have the mustard dressing to cook. I wanted to ask you, Kathy, and ask your audience if they have heard about this new um, coating they're putting on our vegetables called a peel, A-P-E-E-L. I've read an it? article about it. Um, I don't know if anybody else has heard about it, but tell us. Yeah, so I'm so concerned about this. I wrote a blog about it. So every week I write a blog. You can get to my blog on my website, macroval.com. And my blog is called, I am the creator of my health. It's all about health. So this appeal is a new chemical substance that they have created to put on the outside of our vegetables and fruit, our produce. The idea is so that our vegetable or produce will be on the shelf for a longer period of time, okay? However, it's a toxic substance that has never been ingested in the human species before. And what I am up in arms about is the fact that they have approved this to put on organic produce. And I'm like, what? Organic produce? Now, right now, they are going to put a label on it. So I am encouraging everybody I talk to. It is so vastly important when you buy your produce, you've got to look at that label. You have to. I have a friend in New York who recently went shopping at her Costco and bought an organic avocado and she got it home and looked at the label and sure enough, it said AP E-E-L on it. She threw it away because you can't get this coating off. You can't wash it off. And it's just, you know, you could start having health issues, digestive issues, skin rashes, and you'd be like, where is this coming from? I don't understand. I haven't changed anything. Well, maybe the food that you're eating is now going to be covered with this substance that, again, it's never been ingested by the human species before. We don't know what's going to happen. So I just want everybody to be aware of this so that when they go shopping at the supermarket, please look at your labels. And now you need to look at your labels on your fruits and your vegetables and your organic fruits and vegetables. Now you can make a decision for yourself. Look it up, read the information. I mean, my advice and my decision, I will not buy this. I will not put my money towards this. You, you, you vote with your money. And I always vote for organic, healthy, good food. And if I can find a local farmer, Kathy mentioned the farmer's markets. Uh, yeah, they're coming up. Go there and talk to your farmers. You get the best, freshest, healthiest produce from the local farmers. But I want everybody to be aware of appeal and look for it. It's, it's very true, and one of the things is um, I wanted to bring up too, because Dr. Stephanie Peacock has been coming on every month for a while. We've been talking mostly about cleansers, because she talks a lot about non-toxic stuff. But we were also talking about vegetables, and she was talking about the Dirty Dozen, and there's some studies that the Dirty Dozen may not be any worse than some of the other things. And we get, we're going to have her back. You guys can ask her. I'm not the one with the information. But she, like me, prefers to get as much food as possible from local farmers. And oftentimes, even if you're, depending on where you live, you are going to have more access to actually certified organic farmers or not. Where I live, there are a lot of farmers that are doing transitional farming to get rid of everything that was in the land before, the not so nice things, but they'll do um, no pesticides. So you can also ask your farmer what's going on. And they may, if you're friends with your farmer, they can even say, hey, really everything has no pesticides except this year, the squash beetles have gotten to the zucchini, so we put X on it. So if you get to know them in the farmer's market, you can find out little by little, because sometimes they have really valid reasons for using some stuff, but that way you can know what they use. You can ask them and decide, I want zucchini or I don't want zucchini. And I'll try and ask her if she knows anything about this or if there's talk in her field of expertise as well, Val. So thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, I plan on telling everybody in every class I teach. I taught an in-person cooking class yesterday at a local library. There was 15 people in the audience. And when I brought up this appeal information, nobody in the audience had heard about it. Again, that's a frustration that 
they're not informing the public about this. They should, they should let everybody know what's going on. I removed the shiitake mushrooms out of the quinoa because some of the pieces are big. I'm going to chop up these pieces just so that they're in smaller pieces because I don't want those really big pieces of shiitake in there. Now, I just keep checking this to make sure the water doesn't evaporate. There's still water in there. It's still steaming. It's still doing its job. And Mary Jean is saying, in the farmer's market, many booths say organic, but they are not... But if they do not state certified organic, it may not be. And that's kind of the, the opposite of what I was saying a minute ago, which is sometimes they use still the farming methods of organic. So if they're at the farmer's market, you can ask them and start these conversations. And what I would encourage you heavily is don't come in and go, do you put, do you, put you know, chemicals on that? Because that's going to get them to come from a defensive place. But if you just say, hey, there's some things that I can't have. Can you let me know if, you know, what kind, are you using something for the insects? Are you, what fertilizers are you using? And that you will probably get a better response from them. And in fact, they will also be more likely to listen to your request. So that's just a, that's a request for kindness at your farmer's market to the farmers. Because some of them, remember, you may be the first person they've come into contact with who could give them some different information. So if you approach them kindly, they're going to have their ears open. And that's what we really want. I agree with you 100%, Kathy. And also, too, at my farmer's market, there is a, a young guy and he started his garden and he just started off. He can't afford to get certified, but I have a conversation with him and I talk to him it's all organic soil hasn't been you know sprayed or anything in years i mean this is local this is what i would consider organic but he doesn't have the money to certify himself so that's what's great about talking to them one-on-one -on -one. and like 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 kathy said you know i'll talk to them and they'll say you know this one here was sprayed this one wasn't or they'll even tell me what they sprayed it with sometimes they're using an all if there is such a thing but sometimes they're using an all natural thing whereas you know stuff that you're buying from the store um unfortunately you know sometimes it has glyphosate on it which is like the worst of the worst right so again it, it, talking to them personally you get so much more information it's true and what's interesting too and so um Mary Jean is saying certification is very expensive, and I've talked about this before, and that's why a lot of smaller farmers can't afford it, or some people are actually cleaning. Like, I live in North Carolina, so there's lots of tobacco fields. A lot of the small farms bought tobacco fields and have been cleaning it for decades. And then it's, it's very expensive to fill out the paperwork, and it takes a lot of time. Mona says that her farmer's market, the ones that say organic, have this certified, certified certification hanging in sight. And it can just be different depending on your state laws. But one thing to know, too, and actually I'll go both of us. For, and this is weird, and we don't think about this, but, like, pesticides are used in both non-organic conventional farming and organic it's just a different kind so there are things made from chrysanthemums that's very poisonous and would make you very sick if you ate it right and that's an organic pesticide and so i'm not trying to tell you what you should choose or not choose but just realize like when you see organic certified or you see conventional ne neither one of those say no pesticides were used when you see no pesticides, <laughs> then you know, or when you talk to them. Um, and Justine, I will see if I can talk to Stephanie before, and I'll try, try and get that information. Val, are you ready to go for the dressing, or do you need a minute more? No, I was uh, setting up the dressing over there, and I did add the chopped up shiitakes back to the quinoa. Now, I'm going to season this with one of my all-time favorite seasonings, one teaspoon of umeboshi vinegar. I'm going to put that in to the quinoa and the mushroom. So umeboshi vinegar is salty, sour, bitter, pungent, 
and ever so slightly sweet. So I just added all five signature flavors into my quinoa. And I'm also, once these vegetables are done, let's see. God, you know what? They need just another minute. Once the vegetables are done, I'm going to add two teaspoons of the umeboshi vinegar to the vegetables. All right, do you ha do, maybe you don't have umeboshi vinegar because it's my all-time favorite, but it's not that popular of an ingredient, but yet I think it's getting more and more popular. You could add um, a different type of vinegar. Again, the purpose of the vinegar is the sour flavor, and vinegar has been naturally fermented. So um, I here's the... Here's what I get. And there's also Eden brand, organic umeboshi vinegar, you know, traditional umeboshi vinegar. And it's a, it's basically an ingredient that's an, used a lot in oriental cooking, but the flavor is amazing. It's, it's, one of my it's an awesome, awesome thing. And I buy umeboshi plums, which are like little pickled plums. And they're so cute. And I, I've, because I've had them in sushi before. So sometimes I'll put a little bit of the paste in my sushi and it just, it's like magic. Sometimes I put umeboshi paste in all of mine. And if you get the plums, Kathy, and there's a pit inside of them, okay, if you ever have a toothache, take that pit and suck on that pit and the toothache will be gone because of the antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal properties of the umeboshi. If you, I even like the taste of it. So sometimes I'll just suck on the pit because I like the taste of it. But if you have any I've used it personally for a toothache, but it would be good for indigestion. It would be good. My mom swears by the umeboshi plums. If she ever has a stomach ache, she takes a little bit of the umeboshi plum. It's gone. I mean, it is fantastic. I'm so happy, Kathy, that you have umeboshi and you eat them. That's awesome. That is so awesome. All right, let's make this dressing. So... Oh, Kathy, you're muted. I can't hear oh. you. So, okay. So Mary Jean says, please spell that vinegar. So I'll spell it. I looked it up to make sure. U-M-E-U-M-E-B-O-S-H-I plums. Vinegar. But you don't have, the plum may not be on the vinegar, but like if you're trying to look for it, you'll see that. Yeah. So get yourself a measuring cup. We're going to make the dressing in a measuring cup here. Let me just get the correct angle. So the dressing consists of three tablespoons of sauerkraut juice, three teaspoons of yellow mustard, my favorite, favorite, favorite condiment, yellow mustard, two teaspoons of a Dijon mustard, okay? And mustard. I created this dressing and then I thought I would look up to see the health benefits of mustard seed. Again, I was trying to come up with, guess what? The mustard seed is good for your liver too. It's high in sulfur. Mustard seeds contain sulfur. Mustard seeds are from the cruciferous family. So that means mustard seeds are in the same as broccoli and all that. And that's where you're going to get your natural occurring sulfur. So this is a love your liver dressing also. Now we have a half a teaspoon of the dried fennel seeds. And we have, I think it's three tablespoons, right? Three tablespoons of tahini. This is now my new favorite dressing ever because I love mustard and I love um, sauerkraut juice. And then we whisk it together with a fork. And here's a little trick for you. When I first switched over my diet, I could not eat sauerkraut. It was too sour. Couldn't eat it. So somebody told me if sauerkraut is too sour and you can't eat it, put a little bit of yellow mustard on the sauerkraut and the yellow mustard cuts down on the intense sourness of the sauerkraut and you can eat sauerkraut with yellow mustard on it. And I used that trick for years because I had to reawaken my taste buds. Now I eat sauerkraut all the time, no problem. But yellow mustard and sauerkraut, fantastic combination. Oh, it's yeah. a delicious combination. That's good on like carrot dogs. It's good on sandwiches. I still am just hardcore for a tempeh Reuben. And we have a local tempeh maker. Um, 
and I was at the market last week and they actually smoked some tempeh and coated it in pepper on the outsides. So that's going on a Reuben for me this week. Oh my God. We talked about this before. Homemade tempeh is one of the most delicious foods I have ever had in my life. Homemade tempeh. Oh, it's so good. To serve this, I am breaking up some lettuce greens and putting them on a plate. Just uh, so this sal it's called a salad, but it's actually the majority of it is going to be warm, but we're serving it over some lettuce. And I'm also going to put a little bit of arugula in here. I love arugula. It's like one of my all time favorites. And arugula is also in the cabbage family. Right. Has arugula has like that kind of a, a bite to it, you know. Put it kind of here. All right, so we're serving it up now. Let's get our quinoa. Now I'm going to put the quinoa on top of the lettuce, making sure that you can see what I'm doing here in the camera. Yep. All right. Let's put the quinoa next. You mentioned um, carrot veggie dogs. Last year, I taught how to make carrot veggie dogs in my grilling classes. Every year here at my house in Westland, Michigan, I have grilling classes outside. And I've done so many different, I've been doing that for about five years. They're actually some of my favorite cooking classes is the grilling classes, because I love being outside. And that's coming up. If you go to my website, June, July, and August, I have my grilling cooking classes coming up. I'm working on the menu right now, creating all the delicious things I'm going to be grilling outside. Now, it's a lot of fun to attend in person if you're in Michigan, but if you can't attend in person, I can hook up the video and you can attend virtually also. Here are our beautiful vegetables. The color. They're all fork tender. Now I'm going to add two teaspoons of umeboshi vinegar. I'm going to stir this together now, like so. And I'm going to put this on top. Look how colorful that is. So beautiful. I'm going to put this on top, like so. I also wanted to mention, too, that um, I have started to go live on YouTube and Facebook, um, every Tuesday at two o'clock. So if anybody wants to, it's chef Valerie Wilson on YouTube. And, uh, sometimes I cook a recipe. Sometimes I have a special guest. I had Sid, you know, Sid that's teaching the burgers class with me. I had Sid come on with me live and she went over this presentation about inflammation that was so informative you know where inflammation comes from and um anti-inflammatory foods it was a really good discussion that she did on inflammation all right next we need a half a cup of sauerkraut and the way that you measure sauerkraut when you're going to put it on a salad like this take the sauerkraut and squeeze it so you're letting all the juices go back into the container and then measure the sauerkraut without the juice because we already have the juice in the dressing we don't need more juice sauerkraut vitamin c vitamin c vitamin c so full of vitamin c for you and enzymes amino acids naturally fermented food help aid in digestion that's what it is, sauerkraut. I'm gonna sprinkle that on top, like so. I hope you're getting hungry. I'm really hungry and I'm super jealous that this is not going in my mouth after we get off of this live. And I, I always make enough so that I have leftovers. So you can serve this for you, yourself. And this is, this would probably serve five people. So if you want to have some leftover, 
you can, after you eat your portion, you could put it in the fridge for the next day. And last but not least, we're going to put this dressing on there. I am making sauerkraut. I remember the show you did, was it last week with Lisa? You guys were talking about fermented food. I was so excited because I am making sauerkraut. I used to make sauerkraut all the time at the macrobiotic school I apprenticed at many years ago, but I've never made it myself. And I, but I know how, so I've got the crock going. It's fermenting right now, I'm making some homemade sauerkraut. It'll be done in like two more weeks. So that's exciting. And that's something I want to do. I actually did go and start doing a yogurt demo. And then I realized I need to do one that's properly scientifically measured more than what I was doing. I was using some culture that expired in 2021, but it did make some yogurt. I figured worst case, it makes kefir, <laughs> right? Right. Well, that, and my intention was that I'm going to be making sauerkraut and I'm thinking in the fall time when all the beautiful cabbage is coming out of the garden, after I perfect the recipe for sure, then, you know, teaching the sauerkraut. Because you and I, Kathy, we're, What's the word I'm looking for? We are scientists in some aspect. We go in the kitchen and we perfect the recipe, right? And we make sure that, you know, it needs a smidge of this or a touch of that, or how's this gonna go? Or how's this gonna go? And yeah, but it's fun. I love doing it. <laughs> it's exciting and I like the little things. Oh, it's so gorgeous. And Mary Kay and Mona said that would just serve them because it looks so good. The, I'm telling you, this dressing has like a sweet, pungent flavor to it from the sauerkraut juice and the mustard. And then what I love about this is that you have the crunchy lettuce, the quinoa is kind of soft. So the carrots still are kind of crunchy, but the rest of them are soft. And then you have all the flavors, as I mentioned, sweet, sour, bitter, pungent, salty. They're all in there. And our tea. We don't want to forget our tea. I really, I really hope everybody watching makes this tea because yeah, it's for your liver. It'll be great for your liver, but the flavor is amazing. It really tastes good too. That looks amazing, Val. Thank you so much for giving us all that great information. And I actually, um, I actually just sent you a Facebook message to, for you to send me that article. And if you want, we can go ahead and go back to the YouTube channel when we're done and put the article about the appeal stuff as well. So if people want to follow and read up on that. Um, in the comments, someone said, I'm going to ask Dr. Um, Peacock if she knows about it too. And if she has some, she may or may not have any inside information, but I can't hurt to ask. Um, but I just love, like, just look at that. It's awesome. And don't forget, you can go to macroval.com to find out about information about the appeal, A-P-E-E-L, coating that's being put on some foods. Also, you can get her burger class from there that she's doing with two other awesome people. And I just want to thank you so much. Can you move over just towards your sign a little bit? Oh, wait, wait, the other way? the other way. There you go. I'm get you're still cut off a little bit because I've got us in two now. Um, oh, okay. Maybe closer to the salad. Yes. Yay. Sorry. <laughs> but thank you so much, you guys. Make sure to follow up. Um, oh, now this is interesting. This is a good question for you. Justine says, I heard not to buy fermented foods on the shelves of grocery stores, only to buy them from the chilled section. Is that true? Shelf stable items lose all the nutritional goodness. Okay, so when you look for your sauerkraut, I get Eden Organic and it's sealed. So it sits on the shelf. If it's vacuum packed sealed, it's fine on the shelf. She is correct that the sauerkraut in the refrigerator will not be pasteurized. And that's what you need to look for. If sauerkraut is sitting on the shelf and you read the label and it says pasteurized, that means the enzymes are killed. So the stuff that's in the refrigerator has not been pasteurized. 
I know Eden has not been pasteurized because I've called them on the phone, but it's, it's vacuum packed, it's sealed. So Eden is fine, but that's what she's talking. You don't want to get pasteurized naturally fermented food because the enzymes are killed then. Yes. That totally makes sense. And Mary Jean, there will be a, re a replay. There's always a replay unless something goes wrong technically. So basically out of my control. Um, and she wants to know where she could get these recipes. Val, are they on macroval.com, both of these recipes? Yeah, on macroval.com, these two recipes are my recipe of the month. So um, on the left-hand side, scroll down, recipe of the month. And there's another brief write-up about fennel and the health benefits of fennel with the recipes. That's where you can get them, yep. Okay, perfect. And Justine wants this to know, will it say pasteurized on the label or is that something you, okay, it will. Yeah. And I know it's the Hillsborough Farmer's Market is where I got it, I think, last time. I think it's at the Durham's Farmer's Market. We have a local person making kraut. And so I have some garlic scape kraut and some other stuff. And they're making kimchi and stuff, too. So it's all, like, super fun. Yum. So check, check out your there, – there are a lot of cottage um, industries around food. And, like, I actually just went a couple months ago to the Gotta Be NC. They actually had, like, a little, it wasn't exactly a conference, I guess a show. And so, like, you just would not believe. Like, there was someone who had vegan ice cream that they're selling and making in Winston-Salem versus 80 bazillion hot sauces and barbecue sauces and stuff. But I found one that's that doesn't have any oil in it, too. Like, it's crazy. Like, stop, check out things near you. And that way you're supporting those small businesses, too. So yeah, I, am, I am a small business, and I have a booth at the local Westland Farmer's Market. I've been there for 11 years, and I cook in the cottage law that you're talking about. I make jams. My jams are organic and sugar-free, and I can also do desserts. Pieces of, I sell pieces of pie, I sell brownies, I sell cookies. So for 11 years, I have been a vendor at the local farmer's market, and I just absolutely think that everybody, you should go and support your local farmer's market no matter where you live. Yeah, absolutely. And Mary Jean is saying, isn't anything that's canned pasteurized? And I don't think that that's the case. Like, I think what, and you, Val, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think w what we're thinking about is like beans or like I'm canning tomatoes, so I'm using a water bath. All of those things do pasteurize because of the water bath. But like with some jams, what, not jams, but doesn't some of the sauerkraut and pickles, no, not pickles, it, you tell me, you make the sauerkraut, I don't, I just buy it. Yeah, so it's pasteurizing is different than boiling, although it's similar. Like when I make my jams, I boil them to seal the lid. Mm -hmm. the, the Eden sauerkraut, you know, this is made in a factory and they, they seal it. And if this was pasteurized, it would say pasteurized on it. It doesn't anywhere on there. So that's different. This still has the enzymes and amino acid. It hasn't been boiled. It hasn't been pasteurized. So this is the type that you want. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. And Justine is saying, and I've, I've looked into this before, are there any less salty brands that still have all the nutritional benefits? Don't tend to like things that are too salty. And I found that most older pres pr preservation methods salt is is the main way of keeping it from all the bacteria and things like that from coming in now sugar is another way you know like in and i'm not saying that you should do that but i think that's one of the reasons i had asked a local pickle maker if she could make a low sodium pickle and it was going to take a lot of finagling just like i'm not i'm not a canner so i'm going to follow a real recipe, right? Because it has the right pH balance. It's not going to be, you know, like 
a lot of times I, I tend to freeze more things because I'm if I'm using low acid tomatoes that takes off your amounts and then therefore it may not be as safe to eat so like a lot of times it's acids salts sugars are things that long-term preserve food however you you could probably make you can make it yourself because sauerkraut I hear and I may do it along with you. We'll see. Sauerkraut, because I, I have a container. I have all the things. I just haven't made it yet. And once you make it at home, it just is kind of there. But I think you have to add a good amount of salt to it. You might be able to make something you, like a faux sauerkraut using some vinegars and cabbage and things like that and maybe keep it in the freezer. I don't know, Val. I, I mean, like, this is a whole new sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, so fr from my education and what I learned about fermented food, and I've been fermenting food for a long time, although I'm not a professional at it. I do it at home. In order to ferment food, you need salt. You need salt, pressure, and time. If you add vinegar, you will speed up the fermentation process. It will still get fermented, but it's not a traditional fermented food that takes a while. Now, if you are concerned about the salt content, what you would do is you would take the sauerkraut after it's made, after it's fermented, put it in a colander and rinse it. And you will rinse out a lot of the salt from it. You would have to find somebody who was well-versed about how to make pickles without salt, because you're right, Kathy, that would be a very long involved process. My background is making the pickles, the sauerkraut, whatever, using salt. And it's always turned out perfectly, it doesn't spoil. But again, I think the, the solution to that would be to rinse it after it's made to cut down on the salt. So although I know that there's, the people are doing stuff all the time, so I'm sure there is somebody out there who does know how to make these naturally fermented foods using less salts because they've done it before. They have experience with it, right? So I'm sure there's somebody out there who does know how to do that. I will say that, and, and again, I'm not in the middle of the fermenting community, but on the outskirts looking in, when I've looked for those things, I haven't found it. And I think the reason we're not finding so many of them is because it's either hard or unsafe. And if somebody's made, like that's the one thing about canning food and fermenting food is you need to do it safely because if not, yes. you can harm yourself. And so that's a little different than like me deciding to put some dates in ice cream instead of fat or instead of coconut milk or something. Like I can finagle a lot of things there. I have a lot of wiggle room because neither one is going to make you go to the urgent care right now. Now, granted, perhaps eating a lot of coconut milk might have its, you know, things later on, but like with canning and things like that, it can have very immediate result. And I get nervous, that's why I don't can so much too. It makes me nervous, even when I'm sometimes following, because it's so hard for me to follow a recipe. Um, and Justine says fermenting scares her and a Angela is here, which is awesome and saying hello from South Beach. And uh, Dee says she rinses it when she uses sauerkraut. So mm -hmm. she's been doing that. And Justine says so many great tips today. Thank you both so much. And thank you, Val. And thanks for hanging in with us to this extra long, delicious live. And I yeah. will be seeing you very soon i hope and have an amazing amazing class i can't wait for it yeah thank you kathy for having me once again it is always a pleasure to be on the show with you and you just you have a wonderful way about you in fact when when i have some extra time i usually pull up your channel on youtube and watch some of your videos <laughs> you're yes. so you'll sweet see, you'll, You'll see my comments every once in a while on there too. I do. I always make, if you're on the live, I always call you out too to make sure that people can come follow you. But thank you so much. Oh, yeah. We, you and I both played French horn in high school. <laughs> it's true. Well, my degree is in it. So I played in the Louisiana Philharmonic a, a bazillion years ago. Yes, I did. I didn't know you had a degree in it, but for a woman to play French horn, 
and especially back then that was very unique and we were we were we stood out in the crowd <laughs> it's true it's true i i am not a delicate little flower i can i i hung out with all the trombone tuba player whatever and and i and i worked in restaurants so it um it builds up a tolerance. It's a different time then than it is now, for sure. And Beth, don't worry that you missed the live. You can rewatch it. It should be coming right back as soon as it processes it. It might take it just a couple of minutes. And we're going to go. And I'm probably, I haven't decided yet, but it's a very good chance I'm going to do a live today on the Creamy Breeze because it's here. And I, I cheated and I froze a pint already. Usually I take it out of the box together, but so I will put that up. So just look, if I do, it'll go up at least 15 minutes before I go live. I'm not a planner today. So just deep breath, there will be a replay, but I did make this awesome lemon yogurt ice cream, that, like frozen yogurt. It's gonna be delicious. All right, Yum. have a wonderful time, and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon, Val. Bye, yeah, everybody. Thank you.